my first film talked about an experience that I had where I had an intimate medical exam and consent wasn't sought for that first and that experience triggered in me lots of memories of times when other people have been in charge of my body not me and they're not great memories and as an autistic person I'm much more likely to have had those experiences than a non-autistic person. My second film looked at where that vulnerability comes from. It comes from a mix of things. Partly it can be things like if you can't speak or if you don't use mouth words, somebody might consider you a good target because you can't tell. Um, partly it can be <coughs> excuse me, misunderstanding of social situations puts you into vulnerable positions. That's definitely happened with me. Um, sometimes it's been that I think it's so important to get the communication right. <laughs> that I've said or done the thing that seemed to be the right communication rather than the thing I wanted. Um, but also it can be that we have taught autistic children and we have taught children with intellectual disabilities that other people are allowed to move their bodies and when trustworthy reliable people like parents like teachers like therapists move and control their bodies for, they might be doing it for really lovely reasons they might be doing it to support communication they might be doing it to support you know, for whatever reason, but if it's done without consent, it models the situation in which other people are allowed to own your body, and that creates a vulnerability. So I posted about that online, and I got so many messages from people who've had horrible experiences. And I know from reading the research that I'm not unusual, that the statistics show that autistic women are likely to have had the... So I know it, and it's one thing to know it as numbers on paper, and it's another thing to have the messages come in of people saying, this is what happened to me, and I felt bad about it, and I thought it was my fault, and all those things that you hear around this sort of thing but there was one well there was like a theme so if I'm thinking about autism and consent there is a misunderstanding that if you can intellectually understand so I'm an autistic person without a learning disability and you can use words then you can give informed consent and I, I mean you can But when people can't do these things, a lot of consideration is given to how we work out what's the right thing to do and whether they're consenting or not. But when you can, it's just assumed that if you're giving consent, that, that you are giving consent. So I'll give you an example. And this is an example from multiple messages that I got. And because my post had been about medical experience, a lot of the messages that I got were also about medical experiences. And so this person said, I went to the doctors. I didn't know that an exam was going to be part of the appointment. So I didn't have time to process what that meant. And when they asked me in the appointment, could they do this? I understood that the answer I was expected to give was yes. So I said yes. But I hadn't had chance to think about what it meant for me. And then for one person in particular, having said yes, the experience was then very re-traumatising. But the, th the thing that they're pointing to is the processing time. If you haven't given processing time, you haven't given the opportunity for consent. 
and I can think of my own experiences where my aiming to get the social situation right has taken precedence over my considering what my opinions in that situation are. And I know that will seem strange to people who don't have to do that, but as somebody who has got social situations wrong and suffered for getting them wrong, there's a background history there that makes it really, really important for me to get social situations right. You know, I will worry if I catch a taxi, for example, that I won't necessarily get the social situation of the taxi right. And that will be my main concern with catching a taxi. In fact, I don't catch taxis because that is a concern. And I don't catch taxis because that is a concern. So I do walk across cities late at night on my own. And there you can see again where the increased risk comes from. But my need to get the social situation right is something that's been conditioned into me by how dangerous it has been to get the social situation wrong. So I'm not just being, I'm not just prioritising things wrong in my head. When somebody was like a doctor, you know, a nurse, a, a medical professional ask something and there's an expectation of a reply and I know what the expected reply is, I will give the expected reply. I won't necessarily give the accurate reply. And I've had this go wrong for me when people are trying to diagnose me with stuff because I give like I give a really good social performance, but I don't necessarily give the right thing. And in a consent situation, I'll give consent because consent is expected. Consent is the socially correct answer. But I haven't in any way considered whether I consent to this or not. And I have stories I can tell you. I'm, I'm not sure I can tell you. But I have stories that I can hint towards. Where I've done that social situation thing. And then people have done things to me. That I didn't consent to. I've said yes. But, I, but, but the meaning wasn't there. And it's another way. Autism tangles with consent and thinking about this this week um, I, had, I had a dream about it and I'll, I'll talk to you about the dream in the next video <laughs>